Hello, my fellow hirelings of House Telvani. I'm Neloff, and today I wish to introduce to you my most insane build yet. And this is coming from a guy who has a cardboard cutout of his namesake. The Almalexia Incarnate Build, an Altmer who was raised to cast aside her Aldmeri heritage in favor of a Dunmeri culture and their tribunal gods. Just like how the Nerevarin is the incarnation of Indoril Nerevar, this Altmer woman will slowly start to believe that she is the reincarnation of Almalexia herself after a prophecy is revealed to her when she was young by her mentor. Born a mortal and destined to acquire power in order to become a god once more. Or so she thinks. Before we begin, let me state as always that there are timestamps down below that you can use if you wish to skip to certain parts of the video. Now, let us learn about this supposed reincarnation of Mother Morrowind. She was born in the sun-kissed land of the Somerset Isles. She was orphaned on the streets of Skywatch and had nothing but her name, A.M. Way. However, she would not remain an orphan for long, because at the age of nine, she was adopted by a group of Altmer and half-Dunmer mercenaries. These mercenaries were known as the Beautiful, and numbered around 30 soldiers and 5 squires. The Beautiful were once a group of artists that held progressive ideas of letting go of the past in order to move forward, similar to what Saint Veloth did when he led the Chimer from the Somerset Isles all the way to Morrowind. However, the legacy of the Beautiful turned from idealists to a gang of revolutionaries dedicated to destroying many monuments dedicated to the Altmer civilization. The Beautiful were known to vandalize monuments and were something of a nuisance, but that all changed when the Beautiful gruesomely murdered the daughter of the King of Shimmerina, which enraged the public. The Beautiful went underground and were not seen for years. However, when the Oblivion Crisis occurred, the Beautiful emerged as a far more militant and bloodthirsty group of idealist mercenaries that took gold in exchange for fighting back against the hordes of Daedra. Not only were these mercenaries more focused on letting go of the past and the traditions of the Altmer, but they had fully embraced the Dunmeri culture completely, even worshipping the tribunal gods of Morrowind. In any other circumstance, the beautiful would have been driven underground once more, but the Altmeri kin lords and kin ladies needed them. Ayemwe was born some time before the Oblivion Crisis and did not have the privilege of fighting back against the Daedra, but the Beautiful did train her from a lowly squire to a capable warrior adept in blade and spell nonetheless. The Daedric threat may have been over, but riots and banditry were still commonplace as a result of the Oblivion Crisis which meant that Ayemwe had plenty of practice to hone her skills and fill up her coffers. Life for Ayemwe in the Beautiful was rather lonely, because even though they were needed to protect various towns and cities for a price, she was still seen as an outcast even among her people. With the exception of her teacher, Korolath, a warrior whose blood was both Dunmer and Altmer, no one in the Beautiful paid her any attention, keeping her at arm's length, as if they doubted her in some way. Korolath was always brash and harsh with words, but he was also kind at times and a good but stern mentor. He was like a father to Ayemwe, and since Korolath was only of half-blood, he too was also seen as an outcast. On one mission, Ayemwe and two other mercenaries were sent to capture or kill a few rioters who had killed two guardsmen in the city of Alinor. 
the group made their headquarters in a cave east of the city. However, what was supposed to be a simple mission turned into an ambush and a bloodbath. Immediately after entering the caves, four Altmer jumped from a crevice up above, killing the two other mercenaries and leaving Ayemwe as the only survivor. With a dance of blades and spells casted for a spectacle, Ayemwe emerged from the fight untouched and proceeded deeper into the cave by herself. She entered the cavern of the cave and she was met with two Altmer wizards, wearing the robes of an organization that had continued to gain more and more prominence after the Oblivion Crisis, the Thalmor. The eldest of the two wizards stated that all members of the beautiful had been marked for death, as they were heretics for worshipping the false gods and even insulted the tribunal, calling them more pathetic than Talos. Both wizards immediately shot lightning from their hands, but Ayemwe elegantly deflected the bolts with a powerful ward scroll she kept in case of emergencies. Then, she casted a fire bolt right above the wizards, shaking the cave and having rubble fall upon them. One wizard was killed immediately, but the other had his legs crushed by a boulder, and he laid there screaming in agony. Ayemwe drew her sword and plunged it deep into his heart, killing him effortlessly. Ayemwe then rushed back to Skywatch, where the beautiful had a base stationed, only to find it in ruins. Inside the base was her mentor Korolath, lying there bloody and broken, grasping for breath. Korolath then beckoned Ayemwe to approach him, and with his last moments, he revealed a secret kept hidden from her. Ayemwe the Beautiful, you never were. Ayemwe the Incarnate is your true title. When the Tribunal vanished, it was only a matter of time before they would return, but how they would remained a mystery, until I saw your face as a child. I knew in that moment that like the Nerevarine prophecies, Blessed Mother Morrowind would reincarnate as she has in you. For you are Almalexia, the matrimonial mirror of Nerevarin and Hortator, dragon-born and far star-marked. When he had nothing else left to say, Korlath closed his eyes for a final time and passed. Overcome with grief and confusion, Ayemwe could do nothing else but flee, she used what remained of her wealth as a mercenary to hop aboard a ship and fled to Cyrodiil, the heart of Tamriel. For the next 170 years, Ayemwe took many jobs of varying natures. A woodcutter, a miner, a farmer, merchant, mercenary, and so on. With each passing year, she remembered what Korlath said but also began to believe it was the lunacy of a dying man, who knew not what he was truly saying. Ayemwe had been all over western Tamriel, from Valenwood to High Rock. She thought about going to Morrowind, but felt she would never be welcome there, given how many Dunmer had rejected the tribunal in favor of the Reclamations, and would likely be put to death for such heretical ideologies even if she was an outlander. She heard from a group of adventurers in Bruma that Skyrim was ripe with opportunity, and Ayemwe decided to ply whatever trade she could find there. But as she crossed the border, she was captured by a large group of Imperials. Outnumbered and out of practice, she surrendered rather meekly, and was then being shipped to Helgen for execution, and you know the rest. And now for the role-playing. When Ayemwe is being carted to Helgen, she will reflect on her life and face her execution with bravery. She had been running from the Thalmor for so long that all she knew how to do was run, and she was tired of it. 
Everything changes, of course, when a dragon burns Helgen to the ground, and Ayemwe escapes with Raylof. As she has no love for the Empire from growing up with a Dominion and also worshipping the gods of Morrowind, whom did not have immense love for the Imperials, so she will not be escaping with Hadvar. She will continue down the main quest until she discovers that she is Dragonborn. This is when Ayemwe starts to believe in what her old mentor said so long ago. The matrimonial mirror of Nerevarine and Hortator, Dragonborn and Farstar marked. She could in fact be the incarnation of Almalexia herself. The further you get into the main quest line and the more power you acquire, the more certain Ayemwe is of being the Sacred Lady Incarnated. After defeating Alduin, she will embark on a new quest, to acquire more and more power in the hopes of one day returning to Morrowind to depose of the Reclamations and ascend to Godhood once more, rebuilding the Tribunal again. When tackling the many quests in Skyrim, try to view them as trials showcasing different aspects of Almalexia incarnated, giving Eric the Slayer's father money to outfit his son with armor showcases generosity, or slaying a group of bandits in order to rescue a kidnapped citizen demonstrates justice. All Malexia and the rest of the Tribunal were well known for their generosity, so try to give away your wealth as freely as possible and always give alms to any beggars you see. When it comes to factions, I can only truly see Ayemwe joining the College of Winterhold in an effort to learn and acquire more power, but also to spin the tale that she is showcasing the virtue of wisdom. I would urge against joining the Companions because even though they have recruited Altmer and Dunmer in the past, they still symbolize many aspects of the ancient Nords, especially with their reverence to Ysgrimor and the War of Red Mountain, which could potentially be problematic to her overall image in the eyes of the Dunmer people. However, you could try to spin the story of Ayemwe by having her ingratiate herself with Nordic culture in an effort to unite both the Dunmeri and Nordic people and form another Ebonheart Pact, like what existed back in the Second Era. After all, Almalexia was instrumental in the creation of the Ebonheart Pact. This also means that joining the Stormcloaks against the Empire could very well work. However, I strongly advise against joining the Empire, as by this time, Morrowind hates the Empire, and siding with them could ruin Ayemwe's overall image. The Thieves' Guild should be completely ignored as they stand against everything Almalexia Incarnated stands for. She may be self-obsessed and power-crazy, but she is not a criminal, nor is she greedy or corrupt. Destroying the Dark Brotherhood is also highly recommended as the Dark Brotherhood in Morrowind was always held in poor regard, and would make for an excellent tale in the saga of Almalexia Incarnate. When it comes to the Daedric quests, you will want to aid most of them in their efforts as a way to form pacts and alliances, especially Azura, Boethia, and Mafala, the once anticipations and now reclamations of the original tribunal. However, when it comes to the Daedric princes associated with the House of Troubles, that being Mehrunes Dagon, Sheagorath, Malakath, and Molag Bal, you will either want to betray or ignore them completely. The only exception would be Sheagorath, as completing his quest is required to gain the armor we wish to wear to try and encapsulate the appearance of Almalexia. Allying with and being friendly to Hermaeus Mora would also be exceptionally intriguing, as he can tempt Ayemwe with knowledge she thirsts for that can further increase her status to godhood. But never refer to him as master, for you are the master of yourself and no one else. 
Speaking of Hermaeus Mora, let's talk about the DLCs. For the Dawn Guard, you will absolutely want to join the Dawn Guard as vampires are abhorrent in the eyes of many Dunmer, including the Temple, and goes against everything all Malexia stands for. Additionally, fighting the vampires and especially Clan Volkahar could be seen as a crusade against Molag Bal and would make for an excellent tale. The Dragonborn DLC will likely be the most important for Amway's character arc, as she will be learning important shouts and abilities like Bend Will and Dragon Aspect, which will solidify her beliefs in becoming a literal god. The Ghosts of the Tribunal quest will also be exceptionally important, as it will allow you to acquire the Mask of All Malexia, but also have your own cult of worshippers ready to spill their own blood for you. Because none of the characters in the Ghost of the Tribunal mod have any actual dialogue, you can easily roleplay in your head that you have convinced this cult that you are truly Almalexia reincarnated. Also, when interacting with the Temple, House Rhetorin, and House Telvanni, you will want to help them but keep your divinity a secret, as these factions are simply not ready for your second coming, but maybe after proving exceptionally helpful, they may be more willing to accept your godhood further down the line. The biggest thing to understand about role-playing as All Malexia Incarnate is that she is obsessed with her image, but lacks any true morals. Instead of asking yourself, is this the right thing to do, you should instead ask, what will the people think of me after performing this act? Speaking of image, always try to make as many friends as possible, and maybe silence any enemies you might unintentionally make along the way. Lastly, you don't have to actually believe that Amwe is the reincarnation of all Malexia. All that matters is that the character does. Misinterpreting both the Dragonborn prophecies and the prophecy her mentor reiterated that were taken from the Nerevarine prophecies could make for a really fun role-playing build, secretly knowing that Amway could be a false incarnation of an already false god. But I will leave that up to your interpretation. And now it's time for the race, stats, and standing stone. The incarnation of all Malexia is an Altmer for two important reasons. First, it fits the backstory that I have created, but most importantly, second, the goal is to make a character that resembles the appearance of all Malexia as best as we can within the confines of Skyrim's base game and anniversary edition. All Malexia portrayed herself as a Chimer, and the Chimer were originally Altmer who left the Somerset Isles due to clashing cultures, so it simply made the most sense to create an Altmer. However, because this character is the supposed incarnation of All Malexia, similar to the Nerevarine, you can be any race you wish. If you are against being an Altmer, playing as a Dunmer could easily work out. For stats, you will want to invest with a ratio of 3 in health, 4 in magicka, and 0 in stamina. If you go beyond level 40, you may wish to start investing more into health as this character will need a great deal of health when in combat. However, we still want to make sure that we have enough magicka to cast as many offensive and defensive spells as possible. For the Standing Stones, I would recommend choosing the Lover Stone early on for having all skills level 15% faster, but also for roleplay purposes as Almalexia is known as the Lover. Another stone I would recommend acquiring later on is the Lady Stone, primarily for roleplay purposes because Almalexia is known as the Lady of Mercy and the Sacred Lady. The plus 25% regen to health will also be quite useful as well. The 25% regen to stamina is inconsequential, but still nice to have. And now for the skills and perks. 
The Almalexia Incarnate build will be gracefully using the skills One-Handed, Destruction, Heavy Armor, Restoration, Alteration, Enchanting, and Smithing. I will now go over what perks I would recommend getting at around level 50, and explain my reasonings for some, but other skills won't require much of an explanation. For one-handed, you will want to get all five levels in Armsman, Fighting Stance, and Savage Strike. Not only was Aemwe already an adept swordsman, but Almalexia herself was powerful with a sword as well. And we will want to be exceptional with the signature blade of this build, Hope's Fire, when we acquire it. In Destruction, you will want to invest in Novice Destruction up to Master Destruction, Destruction Dual Casting and Impact, and also both levels of Augmented Flames. If you have spare skill points, acquiring Augmented Shock, Intense Flames, and Disintegrate will make your Destruction spells so much more powerful. For Heavy Armor, you will just want to get two levels of Juggernaut and Well Fitted. We won't need to invest too much in Heavy Armor as we have Alteration to compensate, but it is nice to have since we are going to be wearing a full suit of Heavy Armor. In Restoration, you will want to invest in Novice Restoration up to Expert Restoration. Restoration Dual Casting, both levels in Recovery, Avoid Death, and Regeneration. Regeneration will represent the Healing Mother aspect of Almalexia, and not only will this skill tree be great for healing yourself when you take a good bit of damage, but there are plenty of offensive spells that can be used against the undead, which will really have a holy aspect of this build that we will want to make full use of. For Alteration, you will want to get Novice up to Expert Alteration, all three in Magic Resistance, and Atronach. Alteration will be useful not only to make up for our low armor value, but also so we can become as resistant to magical spells like Fire and Frost as much as humanly possible, similar to Almalexia herself, who had a lot of resistance to a lot of magic. In Enchanting, you'll want to invest in all five in Enchanter, Insightful Enchanter, Corpus Enchanter, and Extra Effect. The weapon Hope's Fire is already enchanted, however, enchanting the Golden Armor and a Mask of Almalexia will be essential in order for this character to truly become godlike and also negate the costs of Destruction and Restoration spells. For smithing, you will want to acquire Steel Smithing up to Daedric Smithing, and then get Arcane Blacksmith. This skill is pretty straightforward, as we need it to forge the Golden Armor and also improve upon Hope's Fire. Now on to the Weapons and Armor. For the weapon, we will be utilizing the weapon Hope's Fire, which is acquired in the Ghosts of the Tribunal Creation Club mod. Hope's Fire was the weapon forged by the Dwemer King Dumak and given to Almalexia herself on her wedding day, along with the sword True Flame, to Nerevar Indoril. Hope's Fire was personally used by Almalexia right up until her demise, and will obviously be the most fitting weapon for this character. For armor, I wanted to find a set that closely resembled Almalexia's outfit, as seen in Morrowind. This was difficult, as there are few armors in the game that are revealing that would resemble her outfit. And I didn't want to download some skimpy armor mod because I am not a fucking degenerate, and then I found the golden armor in the Saints and Seducers Creation Club mod. This armor set works for two reasons. One is it is the closest to resemble Almalexia's armor. And two, it also showcases the madness of the supposed reincarnation of Almalexia, as she has become mad with power and the idea that she is a god among mortal men who will someday return to Morrowind to reclaim her status. 
For jewelry, I would recommend an expensive golden diamond necklace and ring, as they would match the armor and they are the most expensive. Fitting for Mother Morrowind. Enchanting will be up to you, however increasing magicka, health, and one-handed will be of import, and reducing any destruction and restoration costs should be prioritized as well. And now for the spells and shouts. For spells, destruction will be the most important, and all of the fire spells should be used, as Almalexia in Morrowind was well known for her fire spells. Incinerate, Unbounded Flames, and Flame Cloak will likely be the most useful. Restoration will be useful not only for its powerful healing spells that will basically make you immortal, but also for spells such as Vampire's Bane and Stendar's Aura, which are fun spells that are only useful against undead. Alteration will only be used for the various flesh spells in the game up until Ebony Flesh. However, the occasional paralysis spell can be used to roleplay enemies being paralyzed in fear at the sight of you. For shouts, most of them will be useful, however, the ones you should prioritize are Bend Will to dominate those around you into accepting your claim to godhood, even dragons. Dragon Aspect, as it will increase the power of your other shouts and make you look awesome as hell. It will also cement Amway's belief in being Almalexia, as her mentor Korolath said she will become Dragonborn. And not only is she literally Dragonborn, but also can become an Aspect of one too. Drain Vitality will be nice to drain your enemies, although this shout is really just an ode to Almalexia draining and sapping the heart of Lorcan. Storm Call and Unrelenting Force are just fun shouts to use in combat, but be careful when using Storm Call, as you don't want any potential followers to be caught in the storm unless they have stirred your anger and rage. And now for the play style and combat. When entering combat, you will want to first cast a flesh spell for defense and then summon hurls of flames at anyone not in your direct vicinity. If anyone is in arm's reach or you feel doom driven to charge at a cowering foe, you should draw upon hope's fire and cut them down for all to see. You should also always have a follower at your side because you're a god who needs worshippers, but also have someone to record and witness your various deeds. The followers you can get in the Ghosts of the Tribunal Creation Club mod are likely to be your best candidates. Now go forth for the glory of all Malexia, who is now you, incarnate. And that's all I wrote! A tribunal goddess-themed build where you reclaim your seat of godhood through power and possibly delusion as well. This was without a doubt the craziest build that I have always wanted to make for months now, and I am so glad that I finally got the chance to do so. So with all that being said, make sure to like the like button, like the subscribe button, and like the bell notification down below to be updated on future videos. And I will see you whenever the fuck I decide to upload again. House Telvani be with you. Please, oh hero of Skyrim, I shall be ever so grateful.